take your own particular desires, disabilities, or difficulties, and express them in words. If, for example, you lack confidence, say, I'm going to get over these feelings, I'm going to feel more confident every day. These suggestions will help to make me stronger and have more self-control. I'm not going to worry what other people think about me and continue on these lines. It will be noticed that many of the above suggestions refer to the future, such as I'm going to feel more confident. This method of self-suggestion employs the phenomena of post-hypnotic suggestions, which has been witnessed at hypnotic demonstrations and who have, had, who have read on the subjects will know is a form of delayed action suggestion. It operates by registering impressions directly on the subconscious mind and they are carried out at a later date. The most common example of self-administered post-hypnotic suggestion is when someone says to himself, tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up at 7 o'clock. If he does wake up at 7 o'clock, he has succeeded in giving himself a post-hypnotic suggestion. The ability to do this is an inherent faculty in everyone and it can be employed to alter one's future attitude, actions, or thoughts, and by this means, many changes can be affected which cannot be affected by willpower alone. It cannot be overemphasized that self-suggestions and self-hypnotism are a means to an end, and these suggestions must be sound and reasonable and planned on a long-term policy if real lasting benefit is to follow. The majority of nervous breakdowns occur because people have successfully suggested to themselves that they were capable of greater efforts than they were in reality able to carry out. They had used suggestions to stifle the warnings of their, of their fatigue centers and drawn recklessly on their reserves of nervous energy until they collapsed. This is obviously not an intelligent use of self-suggestion. It is necessary that the suggestions made to oneself should not make undue demands on one's body, but rather that they should aid the body through suggestions of sound sleep, alterations in diet, lowering of tensions, and intelligent direction of effort which will enable the body to work more efficiently. The mistake of using the power of suggestion without carefully considering the nature of the suggestions made can be exemplified by the following story. A hypnotist met a man who was very worried and asked why he looked so worried. The man replied, I'm worried about my overdraft at the bank. It kept me awake last night and I can't bear the idea of spending any money. The hypnotist said, I'll soon fix that sit down and relax. He then hypnotized the man and proceeded to give suggestions on the following lines. You will forget all about your bank manager and all about your overdraft. When you wake up, all your money troubles will have vanished. If you see anything in a shop which you want, you'll go right in and buy it. Everyone will see the fallacy of a symptom removal in such a case but it should be kept in mind that the same laws apply whether we are spending money on nervous energy, for in both cases, overdrafts cannot be indefinitely increased. It was previously commented on that the things that we wish to achieve are inherent strivings or the expression of the deepest aspirations of one's nature. The suggestions prepared by one sincerely desiring to establish his life on a sound basis to help others or to achieve peace of mind is almost identical with prayers, which are also addressed to the source of all life. This similarity is clearly seen in one of the prayers of St. Francis of Assisi, which follows. Lord, Make me an instrument of thy peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. 
Where there is doubt, let me sow faith. Where there is despair, let me sow hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I do not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, in pardoning that we are pardoned, and in dying that we are born. To everlasting life. Self-treatment suggestions aimed at achieving normal, healthy function of the mind, body and emotions are not alien demands imposed from outside. They are the conscious expression of inherent desires from within. Unconscious activities superintended the electrical the electrochemical transformation of food and energy and the functions of repairing and replacing broken or injured skin, bone and tissue. In short, all the unconscious processes strive to correct malfunctioning of all kinds and to maintain or regain health. This process can be assisted by conscious suggestions. One of the most important factors in successful suggestions is the clear interpretation of these inherent strivings, the fusion of the conscious with the unconscious. This is the recognition of the healthy and constructive aims of the unconscious and their reinforcement by the conscious mind. This and the removal of circumvention of the resistances to this process are the main factors in successful suggestion. Self-doubt and forgetting to carry out regular suggestion sessions are the main obstacles. In framing suggestions, it is wisest, particularly in the initial stages, not to expect too much. Set a modest program. If a difficulty has existed for some time, in all probability, attempts to treat it will have already been made unsuccessfully. If this is so, the individual will, despite himself, have entertained negative suggestions. They can, however, be outweighed by regular positive suggestions. No one knows better than the individual himself his hopes and fears, the way in which he desires to alter his life and some of the circumstances which help and some of those which hinder him. Frame the suggestions of what you wish to accomplish. These desires should be expressed in clear, short, easily understood sentences. Some of these suggestions will be of a personal nature, designed to fulfill your needs. They will probably deal with many aspects of your life, such as diet, sleep, sex, or personal habits, intimate associations with others, future plans, and matters with which no one but yourself are acquainted. In the next section, we will deal with self-observation, which enables you to see and follow up the clues and guidance offered by offered to you by your unconscious mind. 